This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 2629, The Three Most Amazing Types of Freedom, by Paula Pant of affordanything.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I serenade you with the sweet sounds of personal finance knowledge from some of the best blogs on the planet, with the author's permission, of course. And if you're enjoying the show, why not share it with a friend today? Invite them to join the party by sending them a link to oldpodcast.com. And while they're there, they can check out our other shows on topics like personal development, work, health, and relationships. But for now, let's get right to today's post and start optimizing your life. The Three Most Amazing Types of Freedom by Paula Pant of affordanything.com. You can smash almost any limit. You can escape the cubicle. You can fire your boss. You can overcome your internal self-doubts. You can sculpt a flat stomach, make dozens of new friends, and speak a foreign language. Heck, you can even learn to dance. Limits don't apply to you. Well, most limits. Unfortunately, there's one limit that we can never shatter our time on this planet. Time is our most limited and therefore our most valuable possession. Yet the majority of us are trading that precious resource, time, for something that's near infinite in quantity, money. That's unsustainable. Keep it up and we'll exhaust our supply of time. But there is a way out. You see, money is a renewable resource. It can automatically regenerate itself. Money is self-sustaining. Time is not. It's limited. It's non renewable. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. Rather than trade time for money in perpetuity, it makes far more sense to momentarily trade time for money and then harness that money into renewing itself. Lather, rinse, repeat. Soon the money will sustain itself enough that our time becomes fully ours again. But we can't quit the time for money trade tomorrow. Freedom comes in stages. And that's why I'd like to chat about three types of freedom, debt freedom, location freedom, and financial freedom. Stage one, debt freedom. This variety of freedom is self-explanatory. When you experience debt freedom, you don't owe a dime to any lenders. Screw you, MasterCard. Many people describe debt freedom as the day they felt a massive crushing weight lifted off their shoulders. I applaud them, but I have to admit, I'm also a little bit befuddled by that description. Because even after you've achieved debt freedom, you still have the rather irritating responsibility of needing to feed, bathe, and clothe yourself and your family. And unfortunately, you must resort to the dreaded time for money exchange to achieve this. That's why the quest for freedom can't stop there. Debt freedom is the starting point on a much longer journey. Stage two. Location freedom. Location freedom is the ability to spend your time anywhere on the planet, anytime you have a hankering to travel there. Want to explore the jungles of Borneo next week? Sip coffee in Paris? Snorkel the Great Barrier Reef? You got it. You live in the 21st century, you lucky duck. And that means that you possess more location flexibility than any human being at any point in history. You have cheap airfare plus ubiquitous internet connectivity at your disposal. And by golly, you're not going to squander that opportunity. Location freedom is a stepping stone. Some people leap from debt freedom to full-fledged financial freedom without experiencing this intermediate level along the way. They trade a few grueling years of shackled hard labor in order to fast track a lifetime of passive income. Other people, myself included, cultivate location freedom to make those intervening years more enjoyable. We tend to prefer multiple mini retirements throughout every stage of life. And stage three, financial freedom. Financial freedom is the ultimate independence. You no longer need to ride the time for money carousel. At this point, you can do anything you well please. If your job is your life's mission and calling and you'd love nothing more than to continue working, you're free to continue working. Likewise, if you want to move to Tahiti and read books on the beach all day, you're free to do that as well. Here's where we get nerdy. Now here's a head scratcher. Are these consecutive levels, 
like you're advancing from freshman to senior year? Or can you leap from one stage to the other as though you're playing hopscotch? People can get stuck spinning their wheels about awesome life theory. They'll spend an hour debating between the four types of retirement, or they'll argue that this whole model isn't scalable because if everyone ditched the cubicle, our economy will collapse. They'll postulate and rationalize and absolve themselves of any need to improve their station in life. Then they'll battle rush hour traffic, sit in a crummy cubicle with a flickering fluorescent light overhead, and fume that the cards are stacked against them. Instead of debating awesome life theory, how about taking some action? Pay an extra $200 towards your debt. Negotiate with your boss to work remotely every Friday. Put $100 into a dividend stock fund. Toss an extra $400 into your savings account. Read one book about how to buy a rental property. Better yet, buy the property. If conceptualizing the three stages of freedom as a linear one, two, three progression motivates you, then embrace that worldview. If conceptualizing the three stages as a Venn diagram or game of hopscotch motivates you, do it. If adopting a totally different paradigm lights a fire under your butt, then go for it. Just don't sit around debating the minutia of awesomeness. Instead, take action. Start smashing limits. Start building a big old heap of savings. Start negotiating with your boss or building your side business or buying some investments. Reclaim your time. It's all you've got. You just listened to the post titled The Three Most Amazing Types of Freedom by Paula Pant of affordanything.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. Have you been using Mint to manage your finances? First, the bad news. Mint is shutting down. And now, good news. There's a better alternative. Our sponsor, Monarch Money. Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and loving it. Maybe you're saving for a down payment, a wedding, a dream vacation, your kid's college. I've found that Monarch makes it so easy to help you reach your financial goals, whatever they are. I definitely wouldn't be able to allocate my finances or plan as clearly without the help from Monarch. In fact, Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all of your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com OFD. After trying out Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash OFD. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash OFD for your extended 30-day free trial. I can appreciate why Paula is pushing us to take some action in this article. If time is our most precious limited resource, why waste it on perfectionism? The reality is no one knows what they're doing, including me. There's no right way to live or perfect recipe for baking your happiness cake. There is only uncertainty and an ever-changing set of circumstances and preferences to manage. I think the solution is to approach it with curiosity and flexibility. Let yourself get excited about something whether it's debt freedom, time freedom, financial freedom, or maybe something a little more modest, like getting a dog, reducing the time it takes you to run a mile, or keeping a plant alive. Dream up a goal, come up with a plan, and set yourself on a trajectory towards that goal, and then let go of any attachment to the end result. On your journey towards that goal, life will inevitably throw obstacles at you. Expect this to happen and let yourself believe that it's a good thing. Author Gabby Bernstein says, quote, obstacles are detours in the right direction, end quote. We need those obstacles to help us practice being flexible and curious. But in order to collide with the obstacles, we need to get moving. We need to take action. As Paula says, that's how you reclaim your time. But that should do it for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you on the Wednesday show tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.